So Washington Post did a really interesting analysis of the language that the Republican candidates are using on the trail, like the top words that they use that we wanted to go through, because I think it's really fascinating. I think it's also kind of revealing about the way that these different candidates are approaching the race. So let's go ahead and put the first one up on the screen. You've got uh, Donald Trump here. Number one, he, they point out, great. <laughs> and they highlight some of the ones that are like different from the other countries. So it's not necessarily the number one word that they use, but it's the ones that are kind of unique to him. So great, Biden, radical, and border. Uh, Sagar, you were pointing out how mm -hmm. border is very animating among the Republican base. Um, let's go ahead and put DeSantis up. DeSantis leans hard into his time as Florida governor. Um, the other things that you have here are COVID, kids, parents, Fauci, woke and ESG. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I take away there is, I mean, first of all, like really leaning hard into the what he's doing policy-wise in Florida, which we just, just discussed may not land all that much. Um, still talking about COVID and Fauci, something that has really fallen off even among Republicans as a key issue. And then the rest are uh, on the cultural agenda, ESG, which I guarantee if you pull a majority of the Republican base probably has no idea what you're talking about. Woke, which uh, Trump is going after as well and then kids, which fits into that piece. Uh, let's put Mike Pence up on the screen. Pence running hard for that evangelical right base. Um, his words include God, life. Um, he has been probably the candidate who has most staked down a, a hard right abortion, anti-abortion position. Um, Trump, actually, surprisingly, is the, probably the most vocal in terms of talking about the former president, kind of because he can't avoid doing it. Mm -hmm. And constitution, so, um, you know, some, some throwback language there. Nikki Haley, uh, let's put her up on the screen. She's got some that I think really reflect how she leans into her bio. You've got the word proud, strong, love, and together. Um, and kind of similar, Tim Scott put this up on the screen. Again, uh, some of the words leaning into his bio talks about his mom a lot, apparently. Um, God and faith. Mm -hmm. So also making a play for that evangelical right base. What did you think of some of this language saga? What did you take from it? I thought that the most important ones uh, for DeSantis were terms that many Americans don't know. Who, what is ESG? I mean, look, I hate ESG. I will critique it here all day long. I know there's a lot of discussion online about it, but I'm not an idiot and I don't think, if I was running for president, I would never talk about ESG. Never, because I know that the vast majority of what we talked about previously, like voters don't have checklists. They're like, right. is the gas price low? Do I like the guy? Is my wife gonna give me some crap if I vote for this guy? You know, it's like, what do I, what do I talk about with my neighbors? Man, this stuff drives me crazy. Like that's basically, that's most of the amount of thought that most people put into actually all this. Uh, and you know, look, he's running the same strategy for the nation that he ran in Florida. Not a terrible play, but he's not focusing on the right elements. He has to focus more on the economic message about population inflows and about the booming economy. That is what, Turning America into Florida, he's talking too much right now about parents, Fauci, ESG. It's like the ultimate validator is you left your state to come live here. Let's make America just like that. That's mm -hmm. a keep positive. That's kind of a almost like a Reagan-esque type message from 1980. And unfortunately, I think he's learned many of the worst lessons from validation on the internet. You know, Trump's are so basic, and that's also was one of those genius things as a politician. Everything he says is like at a second grade reading level. He's got radical, border, great, and Biden. Easy. Yeah. What, what do you identify with Trump? He always exaggerates. Everything is going to be great. Whenever it's the border, he, okay, he's against Biden's position on the border. Radical, he talks about the radical left, his opponent, Joe Biden. That's exactly the right play. You know, with Mike Pence, it's almost like a meme out of a Mark Levin, you know, type show talking about the Constitution. <laughs> Uh, life and God. Nikki Haley, you know, the fake uh, Reagan-esque vibes that I was talking about, like together and strong and love. And I'm a fighter and I'm always, I'm surprised kicking didn't make the list. <laughs> Tim Scott, uh, you know, you can't help but be endeared to the man that he says mom uh, and God and faith. I mean, I think that's sweet, great. That said, you know, that's, there's a lot of people, up, I think, in the GOP primary who love their mom and who love God and who love faith. So it's not like it's a very unique position that you're taking. Overall, uh, I just thought that the sheer simplicity of Trump and what he's saying is exactly why I think he's leading so well in this primary. I mean, it's really simple. Trump is just a really good politician, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, you listen to him on the stump and even, like, I can't stand the guy and I can't help but be chuckling yeah, at some of what he's saying. Genius. He does all of these, like, comedic bits and mm -hmm. 
he's just a really good politician and the Republican base really likes him. And so it's, you know, it's a tough thing to figure out how to how to crack that nut. I did want to put, the last one I wanted to put up here is uh, Chris Christie, guys. It was the, the next one in the list after Tim Scott. There we go. This is kind of interesting to me. So he talks a lot, apparently, about how leaders of both major parties are making Americans smaller with divisive messages. Um, and his some of his top words were smaller, small, and big. So, um, I mean, he, <laughs> he says that every pivotal moment in history, there was a choice between small and big, and America has succeeded because we always picked big. I would say, out of all these candidates, um, Chris Christie, just in terms of political talent, is probably the second most talented, just like raw political skill as Trump. I do think in some of this just simple, straightforward language, you see why he is a very effective communicator. And Chris Christie is not gonna be the Republican nominee. You know, he's really takes a stake down a position as like the anti-Trump candidate and wants to go in there and, and knock Trump down a peg. But I do think you see why he was able to get elected in New Jersey, why he was such a darling of the right for so long, and why he is that, you know, he is a very effective communicator. And he actually has jumped up in the polls a bit more than I expect. I mean, he's still in single digits, so I don't want to, like, overplay it here. But he has leapfrogged a number of these other candidates who also get a lot of attention. I think it's a testament to the way that he uh, speaks. Chris Christie is always a great communicator, but I think he was elected in a blue state for a reason. He's not a hard right politician, and the GOP primary is a hard right game. He missed his moment in 2012 whenever people were looking for that alternative you know, with Obama. And then more broadly, I think that what you see in this is that as if you're prosecuting a case against the most repu popular Republican since Ronald Reagan, sorry, you're not going to be the Republican nominee. Yeah. You're going to be great on television. I wish you the best of luck. Yeah, we ABC would really News. like to interview, actually, right. we'd like to interview any of these people yeah. here. So we're, guys, we're, we all of you. We put out, you know, we're, we're working on it. You know, <laughs> we're trying to get him here on the show. But I mean, the point though, you know, with Christie is, it's like you're not going to, you're just not going to be the GOP primary or win a GOP primary. Yeah. Uh, you are going to win television. And I think actually, I would like to see him just be more honest, you know, in on TV and kind of his unvarnished thoughts. I really would like that from many of these people. But unfortunately for a lot of them, they always think that they can have it both ways. And it's just like, guys, that's just not how it works. Uh, just not how you win an actual election. Do you think that he, this is one where I'm like, mm. do you think he deludes himself into thinking he can win? Yes, I do. You I think, think he's that got that level of ego? Many, uh, you can't, listen, you know, I always think about this for these people. The, they give up everything, their anonymity, their families. They miss some of the most important things and events in their parents' and children's lives so they can attend some fundraiser for like women against whatever. You know, yeah. you know it's like they, they to, to succeed in the business, you have to have it hardwired that this is everything. And you have to have, in many respects, for all success, you have to have a delusional faith in oneself. So it's paid off many times before. He genuinely thought he could win last time. I know that for a fact. I attended actually an event where he really was, you know, going for it. And even when he was very, very low in the polls back in 2016. So yeah, I think he believes it. I think all of these guys uh, believe it at least in some way. Otherwise, why would you sacrifice so much of what you have? I don't know. Yeah. I think some of these guys know that they've got next to no chance, but it's just like a savvy media, media career play at this point. Awesome. Like there's not that much to lose. There's a lot to gain. Um, you know, just being in the conversation and keeping your relevance is worth a lot. Um, so listen, I don't know which bucket Chris Christie falls in per, in particular, but he also could be one that just feels like, all right, even if I don't win, like I'm going to say things that other people aren't going to say. So people need to hear that message. And that could be, yeah. that could be part of what he's doing. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right. We're subscriber funded. We're building something new. We want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.